If you have been waiting for what feels like an eternity to build a gaming PC with not only good performance, but also a good price, then today's budget build will serve you very well, in my opinion, getting some really good performance. Where we've got two stars of the show here today, they're co-hosting by each other. That is the Ryzen 5 5500, which is a six core, 12 threaded CPU, recently released from AMD, but they haven't really given it much attention, which is kind of funny because I feel like it is literally one of the, if not the best, CPUs for the money to get right now. It's got the Zen 3 architecture, six cores, 12 threads. It's also got great power efficiency and it supports smart access memory if you're going with an AMD graphics card. And that is exactly what we're doing here today with the RX 6700 XT. These have finally come down to MSRP prices. They're great cards in terms of where they stand at performance, but they've also got 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which will be a perfect card for either 1080p max gaming or 1440p max settings gaming. It'll even handle 4K if you wanna drop the settings down to medium or even low. But with those two components aside here today, we've got a build tallying in at $1,050 and it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's also got a great case in that mix, which is the DF800 Flux from Antec. Now they did send this over, they did want me to take a look at it and when I first saw it, I thought, wow, wow. a case that looks good and has five included fans as well as addressable RGB control built in from the mix, you're gonna have a build that not only performs well, but also looks good too. So let's get on to building this thing up, looking out for any problems that we might come into, as well as testing out the performance and the temperatures inside this case. And also on top of that, we're gonna look at the performance numbers before and after when we don't have smart access memory enabled, versus having it enabled. So before we start building this PC, one important note is the motherboard selection. I've put in the links in the description below a motherboard that supports BIOS flashback, and it's a B450. It is important to get either a motherboard with BIOS flashback or a motherboard that specifically states in the description that it supports Ryzen 5000 series out of the box. Because if we insert this CPU and the motherboard doesn't support it, and it doesn't have BIOS flashback, then we'll essentially be booting a PC that will get no signal. And then in order to fix that, you'll have to get another CPU that's older and then put that in and update the BIOS. But if we've got BIOS flashback, we can just insert a USB stick, update our BIOS, we're good to go. Or of course, if our motherboard supports this CPU out of the box, then we're good to go as well. It's just something to be aware of if you are building this system. to installing the components in the case, but we also have to install this reverse fan from Antec. Now with this case, what they've got is your typical push-pull airflow, where these three fans at the front here push the air in, and then this one fan on the outtake pushes the air out. And then what's gonna happen with this reverse fan is it's effectively going to push the air out the bottom, creating a chamber, not just for the CPU and the motherboard VRM, but also for the graphics card suck hot air underneath that out from the case. So we've got kind of a dual uh, airflow configuration going through and helping out the graphics card temperatures. But later on, we will be putting this to the test and seeing what kind of differences can be had.
And now we've completed this gaming PC right here. I'm actually going to give props to this case being the easiest ARGB PC case I have built in to date. I usually budget around one hour to build a PC with uh, lots of RGB fans in it, especially ones that are ARGB. But this thing had all the fans connected from the hub and it had all the RGB connected to the hub as well, which is then connected to the top panel here. So you could just change the RGB effects with the button on the front. And so you don't need to actually install any ARGB software when you install Windows, which can help slightly with performance. We have tested this in the past and ARGB software can reduce your performance and even cause stuttering in certain games. Though that was only the first convenience that we ran into. The second convenience, and I'm making it sound like a problem when it's actually really good, was that there was just so much room in the back of the case and in the front. I had no problems installing any of the hardware, the power supplies, cable routing, everything just had ample amounts of room, even though this case isn't that big. It's a mid ATX size tower. So what Antec have done here is really maximize the space inside this case, kind of like what the Japanese do here in Japan with the K cars, where you got these little cars, but they're so spacious inside. That's kind of how I'm thinking about this Antec DF800 right now, where if you even wanna go crazy water cooling, you can add 360 mil rad up the top, 360 mil rad at the front, and even a 120 mil rad at the back of the case where they've even extended it out a little bit so it doesn't interfere with a motherboard's heatsink on the VRM. Though the final thing with this build was the reverse fan that we've installed here. You may have noticed with the build process that I installed the motherboard, the power supply, and then connected all the cables first, except the GPU and the GPU connector. And then I put that reverse fan in. And after that, I installed the graphics card and the PCIe connectors. And this was the best way to do it without coming into any conflicts. Though speaking of that reverse fan, it's now time to play some games, give you guys some benchmarks, and also test out the temperatures with this case. And the easiest way to know if a case is going to give you good temperatures, if it's got good airflow, especially like Antec are claiming here with the F Lux or Flow Luxury, is to simply leave the side panel off check the GPU and CPU temperatures, then put that side panel on, check the GPU and CPU temperatures. But I'm also gonna throw in one more benchmark and that is unplugging this reverse fan too. So let's get some FPS numbers and some temperature numbers for you guys. Coming back now with the benchmark numbers, I've got some very impressive results to share with you on these gaming numbers, but not only the gaming numbers, also the case too, the DF800. But let's start off now with Borderlands 3 Ultra Settings, and I'll pull up the numbers here where I tested DX12, and we had smart access memory off versus on. And here we saw an uplift of FPS going from 107 average to 129. Also the 1% and 0.1% lows did improve to the point where I noticed more stuttering while I was watching this benchmark with smart access memory off versus on. And then moving over to Fortnite, we had this on DX12 as well. With smart access memory turned off, we had 139 average FPS and good 1% lows at 97. And then the 0.1% lows, however, did have some noticeable stuttering a lot more often than having smart access memory on. Keep in mind, we did have a odd stutter here and there with smart access memory turned on, but it was less frequent. And we also boosted our average FPS up to 150. And the 1% low went up to 109 and the 0.1% low went up to 54. So this was a very solid solid display coming out of a multiplayer game that a lot of people play. And then moving on to Apex Legends, we did see a slight boost in FPS running the benchmarks here, but the game ran really well, both with smart access memory on versus off. 
Then the last title we got here is Total War, and here we've got 108 average FPS, and that boosted all the way up to 142. So this game is more or less a poster child for smart access memory, and how much FPS you can extract out of getting this technology if you have the AMD CPU and the AMD GPU together. And it's very easy to turn on. You just turn on above 4G decoding in the BIOS and two other settings, and then it will enable it by itself if you've got the Adrenaline software, that's the drivers, installed. So moving on now to the DF800, however, this scored some pretty impressive results when it came to running Furmark. And now I set the GPU fans to 100% just to get an apples to apples comparison on the temperature differences. And here's where we had 58 degrees with the side panel off versus 57 degrees with the reverse fan unplugged and then 56 degrees with the reverse fan plugged in. So Antec are definitely implementing a good design when it comes to airflow with the DF800 Flux series. Now Antec also told me there was four other models that feature the included five fans in the same chassis, just they've got a different look. So they have the DF600 Flux, the DP502, both in black and white, and then they got the DF700, and then the P10 for people who don't like RGB. So it seems like Antec are very confident in this Flux design series, and the benchmarks definitely show so, but one more benchmark I decided to test was the CPU temperatures. We ran Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes, and this was all done in a 23 degrees Celsius environment as well. And here's where we had 76.3 degrees, dropping down to 76, then dropping down to 75.5. So that's showing that you gain a benefit on the maximum temperatures, but also all the other components as well will benefit in your system, like your motherboard, for instance, from having good airflow. And with all those numbers out of the way, it's finally a good time to build a gaming PC. It feels like it's been a long time coming, but finally prices are coming down, especially on the graphics cards. I believe if you're after a used graphics card and you wanna save a bit more money too, they're gonna to come down even further when miners start dumping them on the market. But in terms of buying brand new stuff, a build like the one we did here today is gonna to give you great price performance as well as just great FPS in general. Now I will be putting some links in the description below if you wanna build something like this brand new, but I'll also be putting some other links if you wanna save a few dollars, say for instance, buying a Ryzen 5, 5500 off AliExpress and a motherboard off AliExpress that's already got the BIOS ready to support it, then you can save a few dollars and especially if you don't live in the United States, you can also take advantage of those AliExpress deals. But in terms of the parts that I used here today, I did use some different parts than what I'm linking in the description below, simply because I bought these off the used market for very cheap. I even saved a few dollars by buying used. However, since people can't replicate those deals, especially if you are buying the parts, brand new, I decided to price today's build in what you can realistically go out and buy the parts for now. So hopefully that's a better guide than what I'm used to doing with my used budget builds. Do let us know, however, in the comments, which do you prefer? Do you prefer I price up builds for what I actually paid for them? Or do you prefer I price them up with what the market can get them for? I think a bit of a balance between the two, say for instance, if I'm doing an older used build is more indicative of used prices and what I get them for. But if we're doing a new build, Maybe it's better to put in what you can actually get them for off the market. Though I'm not too sure. I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. So do let us know in the comments, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Blade Runner. And they ask, can these run an AMD 5000 series? And they're talking about the ASRock B550 Riptide motherboard. On the website, it does say that it will be Ryzen 5000 series ready, meaning it will support the Ryzen 5000 chips without having to update the BIOS. Though before you do buy a motherboard and you're buying say a Ryzen 5 5500, do check that the motherboard is 5000 series ready, or if it's not, make sure it either has one of two things, and that is either BIOS flashback, so you don't have to get another CPU to update the BIOS, or the person selling that motherboard specifically states in the listing that it's been updated, the BIOS has been updated, and it's ready to work with Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And then you won't have any headaches or you shouldn't have any headaches when it comes to building your PC. And lastly, big thanks to Antec for sending out the DF800 Flux. Very happy to check it out since in the end, it is an awesome product. Great to see some competition coming to the case market where you can get pretty much an end game case 
for not such an end game price. It's very good value. I even like the little touches that they added on the input output. For instance, they put little rubber grommets in there. So if you're not using those ports, you can cover them up. And also inside the case, you can fit a mammoth graphics card. You could even fit an RTX 3090 Founders in there. And that thing is huge. And on top of that, the ARGB wiring is already done for you. So it's gonna be a complete breeze to build in. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Close to my heart.